Hey, Parker Trash here, out in the middle of the glorious Gulf of Mexico, and, well, I said I was going to start this project, and we've been very busy here, we just brought our new well on, and it's been hectic, and anyway, uh, I just opened the box for this thing today, and there's surprisingly few pieces, I mean, they're big pieces, but there's not that many. Um, Got one sprue of uh, white pieces, which is going to be, I think, just the upper legs and the chest. Oh, wait, wait, they got some more white down here. Looks like uh, ankle guards and arms and stuff. Uh, blue sprue, looks like it's weapons. Excuse me, I scratched my eye. And then this one with the huge parts for the lower legs. Uh, pretty much everybody's been saying on my video that I need to go with a caterpillar theme on this you know big yellow caterpillar and what I think I'm going to do is according to uh, MAHQ the full armor Gundam was pretty much a deemed a failure before it was ever even completed so I'm gonna say okay so they decided they didn't want to send into combat let's make a, uh, a salvage Gundam out of it and I'm actually not gonna make it a Gundam I think I'm gonna make a a head fart with just a simple camera, something almost Xeon-ish looking, but just simple. Like, well, we're going to start cutting corners to make this cheaper. And and a big part of that, that I want to make it look like they decided to cut corners, is if I can find the, the hands. The hands, I find, are just atrocious on this thing. So, anyway, we're going to see how that goes, and I'll check in with you all in a bit. Okay, this is actually the first part you have to assemble. This is the neck, and looking at how this is, if I do decide to go forward and build my own head for this thing, uh, it should be fairly easy. I mean, just trim this right here, trim this right here, and I'll end up with something that is fairly adjustable and still on the bottom should rotate in the chest. Uh, looks like we have to do quite a bit of trimming. They got some not even edges right here and once again this is a glue together kit all they have is pins for alignment so I'm gonna have to see it. it's been a long long time since I've built anything that wasn't snapped together just glue, piece glued together and just kind of getting ready for like I said I want to show I'm not very good at it but seam elimination you want to have enough glue that it kind of overflows just a little bit I actually could have used a little bit more right there but if I don't have enough in there to get the effect I want, I have a secret weapon that I don't know that I've seen anybody actually use in Gundam kits, but I've used it on some stuff that I've done before, and it is this stuff right here. Um, Bondo Glazing Putty. Uh, basically, it's not a two-part epoxy. It goes on, it, uh, shoot, I don't have my tripod out here, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty. Basically, it's, uh, it's a paste. It is almost feels like a thick oil base paint, but give it about a day and a half to cure, and it is rock hard. A, uh, a two-part epoxy would be ideal, but this stuff was only like $4 a tube, I think it was. So it's cheap to experiment with. Um, plus, it's easier to work with out here because having a mixed stuff, you don't know when you're going to get interrupted. So uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, let this cure, and I'm going to start building some other stuff. Okay, now this has had a little time to dry right here. And you can see how it's it's overlapping the uh, seam right here. Uh, same thing on this side, just not as much. So what I'm let's see if I can do. This. What I'm going to do is take my file, and I'm just going to. Damn, this is hard holding this in my chin. Just going to take and flatten out this right here as much as I can. Damn, this sucks. Oh, I, 
I really should have figured out some way of rigging up a tripod. So anyway. What you end up is, with is this right here. And even though you can still see, actually I, I'm going to have to come back with some putty on this one because I can still actually feel the gap. Let's see what I end up with on this side. All right. So we've got this and it's a lot smoother. It's pretty smooth, but I can still just barely rub my nail over it, feel it catch. So if I paint this, you're still going to see this seam line. So what I'm going to do is the putty I showed you all earlier. They actually uh, call it glazing putty. I'm just going to take and dab that over that like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to just dry overnight because I'm not going to mess with that piece until morning. And whenever it's all right, said and done, I'm going to take and I'm going to sand it and it hopefully should be very very smooth. I'll talk to you all later. Alright, one of the things that uh, Too Old For Toys wanted to be done in the videos was to show it assembled and then painted after. And that would be really hard on this because of the fact that the toy glues together for assembly. So what I'm probably going to have to do is just build it in sections, but I wanted to show you this, just how much of a gap there is between these parts. I mean, you can see daylight through almost all of them, and I'm squeezing pretty hard right here to try and close the gap, but uh, I mentioned I don't know when it was made. They've got these right here that... Uh, you know, it's a, some sort of coupon for juice in Japan only. But if I'm not mistaken, this that this right here means this expired in October of 1983. So, yeah, this is an old, old kit. All right, well, I'm going back to work. Okay, right here you can see a lot better. What I was talking about wanting to be able to mash out a line of glue all the way around the piece. That is going to take and bond the two pieces very well together. Plus, once the glue sets, you'll be able to sand it down and get rid of the seam line. Uh, like I said, you'll still be able to see it, but your goal is to not be able to feel it. So, let's go back to the chin cam here. What you're going to want to do is just lay down just a thin little bead all the way around the part. And you don't really want to touch it because this stuff eats the plastic. That's how it works. So if you get it on your fingers and then you get it on the figure, it's going to eat the fit the surface of the figure and leave your perfect little fingerprint right in it all right this is where I stand right here at the end of day one uh, pretty much I just want to see what it looked like complete and I want to play more by the spirit of the law of this game so um, I went ahead and pretty much everything is held together by wishful thinking and rubber bands at this point um, Hush. I uh, I didn't put the shoulder armor on because I didn't think I'd be able to take everything back apart if I did, and I couldn't figure out how to get on with rubber bands, no V fin, and with what I said I was want to make this model, I'm thinking about ditching this shield and the gun and converting this into like a uh, large torch, possibly converting the barrels of this on into a uh, like some tanks to supply fuel for the torch 
Um, and the head is growing on me. I, like I said, I had planned on just not running with the head and making just a little box with the mono eye or something just to show it's been cheapened some. But uh, I'm not sure. Uh, probably won't be doing that till I go home anyway, so y'all can comment on the video once I post it, once I get home. Alright, well. Oh, and one thing that surprised me, this thing has waist articulation. Uh, I'm not sure if it still will with the chest plate on, but the way it was without this on, you did have uh, some waist articulation, which surprised me. Alright, well, later.